Maxwell Caulfield first made a splash with a string of sexy roles off Broadway. He's had success on the big screen and the small screen, but he always returns to the stage, and he's currently starring in an off-Broadway revival of the swingin' 60s sex comedy, Cactus Flower. Please welcome Maxwell Caulfield. Hello there. Good to see you. How you doing? I'm good. Great to see you, Paul. Are you glad to be back in New York? Yes, it's been too long. Um, it's been actually, my wife Juliet and I were adding it up. It's close to nigh on three years. And that's without even checking into the city, which is a crime in itself, because I was just walking over here to meet you today, and it's one of those perfect New York days, you know? Crisp, clear, nice and cool blue skies, and that spectacular skyline. I know you've done a lot of runs of shows, but have you lived in New York beyond that, or you just come over here to work? Uh, no, I came to New York. I emigrated to New York in the late 70s. Right, I know that you started here. Yeah, and... Um, now, how old were you when you moved to New York? I was 18, and... Uh, I got lucky pretty quick. I, I, I landed in, a, in an, um, an off-Broadway show, or a show that transferred, I should say, from the Perry Street Theatre to right. the Players Theatre on McDougal Street in the West Village called Class Enemy. And you did a lot really fast. The, uh, like yeah, you I was young, pretty you... precocious. Uh, I, um, precocious how? Well, insofar as I was ambitious, of course, you need to be in this game. You have to have a clear sense of... of, of of your, not so much your destiny, but what it is you feel you got to offer and, uh, and then seek out those roles. And um, uh, I did, you know, I got the, the sort of the kind of the cliched uh, uh, storybook discovery situation, uh, not off of Class Enemy, but off of a play I did subsequently to that called Entertaining Mr. Sloan, right, exactly. the Joe Orton piece. The show did become a bit of a core celebrity, and I got scouted out by the, the studio, uh, Paramount, and uh, got to do the sequel to Grease. Right. Well, we're, now we're moving really fast. Oh, I know. I'm telling my whole life story here. <laughs> we, just, we just did it yeah, all. Yeah, but you said, you said what, 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 I put a bunch of things together, and they did come in pretty short order. Yeah. yeah but then did. the train came off the rails in a major way with... Uh, with the with the uh, with the movie because it did uh, well. I have to. We have to. We're going to talk about. Okay. I don't know if you like talking about Greece too. No, I'm happy to. But I'm to. a little obsessed with Greece too. Good. Well, thank you. So All now more that reason I finally have you it. sitting in front of me, <laughs> we are going to talk about Greece too. All right, happily. First of all, I want to ask you. What do people call you? People call you Maxwell. Max? Uh, yeah, yeah, generally. But I find I found I've been introducing myself more and more as Max these days. I don't know why. I just As you get older, you have a more casual... I guess it's a very American habit to immediately shorten people's names, but my wife says dogs, everybody's dog is called Max, so I should really get out of the habit <laughs> of that. And my mother swore she, she would never have, call her son Max, nor should anybody, <laughs> you know. But fortunately, I didn't end up with the name she was originally going to give me, which was, I think it was Aubrey or Cuthbert or something unbelievable, so <laughs> I'm very happy to be called Max or Maxwell. I read in an interview where you said you were working in London when John Travolta came for the premiere of Grease. Is this oh, true? Yeah. It was for the premiere of Saturday Night Fever. Oh, okay, Saturday Night Fever. And there was Bedlam in the West End. Nobody quite knew who this guy was, but they knew, uh, you know, a planet was arriving. And uh, the Klieg lights were, you know, breaking the skies, and this white Rolls Royce pulled up. And the, first the Bee Gees spilled out, and then, then JT hopped out, and the girls went bonkers. And I was standing there in my little green monkey suit from where I was working across the road at the, the flagship Odeon Cinema. And you said, I tickets. want that. I said, uh, I like this. I like the response from all these, these chicks. Um, uh, yeah, I did. Maybe I, yeah, I wanted a piece of that action. So you moved to New York very young yeah. and clearly ambitious. Mm. And you immediately started doing well. Uh, yeah, what, it, were you, what were you like? I mean, what was New York like? Where were you living? New York, it was how exciting. You, it was a very exciting time in New York. How did you settle in? Where, where'd you uh, live? Just, you know, the way most actors do, you know, sort of BS their way <laughs> <laughs> to the front of the line. Somehow even got in. I remember once going into Studio 54, claiming to be delivering Sicilian pizzas. The <laughs> velvet rope was lifted. I can't remember whose name I threw around. <laughs> you know, I was kind of cute looking, so they, you know, the rope <laughs> got lifted. Well, you got a lot of attention for being cute looking. <laughs> you did, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Then I took all my clothes off just to sort of bring the point home. Yeah, but I, the I, roles I, I, that was as according to the script. You know, this wasn't me. Well, you are myself. kind of known for taking your clothes off on stage. It's gonna, it's gonna be <laughs> Michael Bush, the director of Cactus Flower. He said, "I'm going to be the fully first." You're yeah. fully clothed. You're fully clothed. He said, "I'm going to be the first. We have. I have to do a lot of quick changes in the course of this show because you know I go backstage and immediately start ripping my clothes off, another tie and a jacket, and I instinctively sort of start undoing the shirt because I have to change trousers. <laughs> and he goes to me, Maxwell, I'm going to be the first director in a long time to have told you 
Keep your shirt on, dude. <laughs> Does that feel unnatural for you? No, well, I tell you, I'm getting <laughs> to the point where they're going to throw my trousers at me and say, keep them on, for God's sake. Well, I have to, and I, again, talk about, you know, we're going to do some embarrassing things, but these, these are kind of legend. I have something in here, and you, you know all these. There's a magazine in the 70s called After Dark. Oh, yes. Do you remember this magazine? Uh, well, 70s I, and they, 80s? They were taken, those, if they're the pictures I think you're going to show, they were taken by uh, a very Ken, prestigious folk Ken photographer. Duncan. The great Ken Duncan. So there are, picture, there are a lot of pictures of you like this. Uh, yes, this that's is, right. Yeah, I, uh, this is Maxwell. Well, they, don't forget, this was the kind of the wardrobe back then. You know, I, as I said, that when I got look. to New York uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, the party was are. raging. Teen Idol. Uh, yeah, big hair. So what is it like looking at these pictures? I mean, you, I mean, obviously, you didn't resist to showing off your body. and. Um, you know, as I said, when you're younger, and you see it now, particularly with, the, with this new generation of pop icons, yeah. um, <clears throat> television stars and what have you. I mean, uh, people have flaunted in a major way. But back then, it's funny, um, there, was a lot, there, was less sort of, there was less flesh on show. So I remember the Calvin Klein posters when they started going up mm -hmm. and the sort of the sensation they caused. And, um, and I sort of fell into that sort of, you know, into that sort of uh, era, as it were. Um, and... Um, now, I mean, you see the girls, the actresses on the covers of these uh, lads mags, and you just go, excuse me, is that a porn star? Or is that, uh, you know, Maxim an and aspiring, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Emmy winner, you know? And um, uh, so uh, it's, I guess, to some degree, I, I, I caught a wave. I was very fortunate. I caught a wave, and some, some, some really neat people took a shine to me, uh, you know, tastemakers like... Uh, uh, Andy Warhol and Robert Stigwood, yeah. and, and I got f photographed by fabulous uh, talents. As a result, you know, an, an image got created. Right. And, um, you know, I just rode along with it. Is it, I've, I hear a lot of women who pose for Playboy yeah. talk about that they want to have, like, their body documented. Is it cool to have your body at that age, like, documented in photographs? Well, it sort of basically says, you know, <laughs> you better not let it go, pal, because otherwise they're going to sh shove that in your face <laughs> and say, whatever happened. Right. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm very lucky. My meta metabolism is such that I don't seem to be dealing with some of those n normal middle age issues uh, that, that come up and smack guys upside the head. I mean, right. the hair is another matter, but the, the body has stayed, uh, stayed pretty good. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, it's led to me being cast in this great role, this of this sort of uh, aging Lothario. Right. And uh, I really, frankly, uh, Paul, I, when I first got sent it, I was um, surprised that it had come my way. I, I didn't uh, necessarily think that I was ideal casting. But as the play progressed and I got deeper into the second act, I realized and the guy gets more and more sort of angst-ridden and neurotic. I thought, oh yeah, I can, I, can, I can put this across. It's a lot of fun to watch you. Even though you are fully clothed, I highly recommend everyone go see Cactus thank you, Flower. Thank you. Uh, actually, Jeremy Bob yes. gets to yes, show Jeremy, his part. He, he gets the Maxwell Caulfield part. <laughs> he shows his... Running around in a, in a, in a, in a loincloth, <laughs> as I term it. I, I just said to you, good luck, pal. I said, <laughs> stripping off like that every night. And I must say, it's just solid gold material. The dialogue is, you know, it's written by the, the Abe Burroughs, who, yeah. who wrote Guys and Dolls. And, Legend. On, and How to Succeed in Business, which is getting a first-class revival this season, obviously, on Broadway. And uh, that kind of patter is, is, is a rhythm to it. And it actually doesn't even require the actor to do much more than see the great movies of that period and go, oh, okay, I hear that sound. Mm -hmm. And then again, our director's really sort of orchestrated it so that uh, hopefully every one of them lands, every one of the, the singers. Okay, I, I want to talk to you, this, and also in this photo shoot, so we have a picture here of sure. your, oh, your yes. beautiful wife. Oh, yeah, please. Juliet Mills. There she is. What and a drop-dead gorgeous babe. This is very soon after you met, I, I yes, suppose. Yes, yes it is. Um, what I... I, I'm so fascinated. Now, you were how old when you got married? You were 20? No, I, I had to actually turned 21. I was barely legal. And you did The Elephant Man with her? That's how we met, in yeah. In Florida. You rehearsed yeah. here and you did it in Florida. We, we rehearsed at the Minskoff building. Okay. No and longer a rehearsal space. Isn't it? That top floor? Oh, it was glorious. It was yeah. the 45th floor. They had this sort of wraparound view of downtown in Jersey. Great place to fall in love. Really. The winter <laughs> sunsets, crimson skies. So here's what I find amazing. Yeah. You were this... 20-year-old, 21-year-old yeah. man, and you obviously, like you said, you had all this attention. Mm. You came here looking mm. for attention and wanting to be John Travolta. And it's amazing that you, you launched into this 
relationship so so quickly and you proposed to her and, yeah mm, and, yeah and of course it's also amazing that you're still together and I'm sure yes. a lot of people when you first that was be, a great being the age you were I'm sure a lot of your oh, friends were like no, I was I wasn't what really are you doing or no it was well I was kind of a lone wolf I mean I'm sure it was Juliet's friends who were saying what are you doing right um, uh, but um, at the same time, uh, we just, we were so smitten with each other and I was so con just in instinct intuitively knew I wouldn't meet a woman necessarily again who would of this kind of class and uh, quality and beauty in my opinion. And uh, as a result, I just found myself proposing to her. And I, the last thing either of us were looking to do at the time was get married. Wow. We ended up going back to her place in California and um, because it was a choice between her little mini mansion, her little Spanish villa mm -hmm. in the Beverly Hills, and my roach-infested closet on the east side. <laughs> it was much <laughs> of a debate. Had you been attracted to older women before that? Um, mm -hmm. uh, no, I, no, no, but I mean, you know, frankly, women, I think, peak in their late 30s. Uh, right. And then it, they just get, you know... Right, don't they say that's, that's actually perfect, a man... 21 yeah, and a woman in their late apparently 30s. Apparently, both, both Sexual parties. Sexual peaks, right? Well, yeah, well, you said Isn't it. that what they say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're encouraged, Michael, just back to the show now. Well, Michael <laughs> encourages us to play the peaks and valleys in this production. And Cactus Flower. Yeah. We're, which we're is, bringing it back to yeah, the, the yeah. play. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and in the play, you know, I'm dating a, a little 21-year-old chickie. And, um, and, and yet I don't, I'm s oblivious to, uh, up till... Up heretofore have been oblivious to the charms of my secretary, my right. assistant, my nurse, and actually, really, my sort of, my, my wife, which, right. which is what the course of the play takes, right. takes this character on, is where he suddenly wakes up to her charms. So can we talk about Grease 2? Yes, annoyed? absolutely. Happy to. Okay, good. When's the last time you saw it? Um, let me see. I did see it quite recently, within the last couple of years. Um, did you go and, to your way to see it or it was on TV? No, no, it came on TV. Uh, my daughter is amazing. Melissa has seen the film umpteen times. As a result, it's part of her. Right. You know, she's grown up with it. And that's the thing about the film, even though, as I said, it, it had the misfortune to open on the same day as E.T., um, which obviously just rolled over us like a juggernaut. Um, it, 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 it's found an audience over mm -hmm. the years, slumber parties and what have you. and. Um, and it's been handed down from sort of, you know, older brothers and sisters have turned their, you know, their siblings onto it, and then it's become their sort of favorite. So it's, it's classic, it really is genuinely a cult movie. And, um, and in watching it recently, I was really rather, I saw the charm of it, I did mm -hmm. see, because I always felt it was kind of a, sort of a poor relation to the original. I really didn't think it had the pizzazz. And it didn't, certainly didn't have the soundtrack. It didn't mm -hmm. have that, you know, but it, uh, and it didn't have, John Travolta. Uh, we did have Michelle yeah, Pfeiffer. I had you. Uh, well, I had me, but obviously Michelle, Michelle was the one who got offered the recording contract and after the end of the deal and got to work with Al Pacino in the next film. And I was persona non grata for a couple of years there. In fact, the next time I got to work on the screen was uh, with uh, Charlie Sheen. Which I wanted to talk to you about <laughs> because obviously <laughs> Charlie Sheen is in the news this week. God, Lord above. What oh, is boy. that? Like? <laughs> you, I mean, you guys were, were young kids together. Yeah, that well, he was, he was the one, it's the film's The Boys Next Door. He authenticated it because he was 18. And I was, we were playing high schoolers okay. uh, and demented ones at that. And I was, by now, I was into my early 20s. Right. But uh, I sort of, I guess, I don't know, just as I said, Charlie, because of the, being the age he was, I was able to tap into his sensibility. Fortunately, I, I, you know, I didn't go all the way. <laughs> because, uh, I, I mean, I obviously, like everybody, I've got to, I can't say I'm not, not concerned. Um, right. The guy does seem a bit delusional at the moment, but you know, that kind of wealth does corrupt, absolutely. And I think that, uh, I, I just think that um, it's a good thing They've, uh, they're stemming the, the tide. I understand his, uh, his anger at the moment, and, um, but I also re realized that somebody had to put a halt to this lunacy. And, you know, you, you just, I'm just hoping he does, makes the kind of comeback that uh, Robert Downey Jr. has. I just hope Charlie is, you know. Well, in some ways, you went into all of that Hollywood madness with a, very sti with a wife. Well, that was, that's it. I that's mean, that's the difference. You know, you, you weren't this wild child. You really yeah. settled down really quick. Mm. 
Yeah, you think I think that helped keep you oh, yeah. normal no and stable. Yeah, I think I think I might have crashed and burned myself if yeah. uh, if I didn't have the great stabilizing influence of Juliet. Was it so? Is it so? For a while, was Greece too something? It was like that damn Greece too, you know? Like, no, I mean it's much my fault. I mean I was meeting people like Paul Schrader when I had the deal, the three picture deal at Paramount, mm -hmm. and you know he was showing me his script for a film called Born in the USA, and I thought mm, so I want to play the other role, and uh, you know and. Uh, it would have got the f film probably greenlit at the time because Grease 2 hadn't been released right. and Paramount would have gone, okay, you got Caulfield, you got a movie. Right. And I sat in the fence and um, the mm. film got rushed released and suddenly, you know, Paul Schrader's like, I don't think so. <laughs> no, that other role, the one that I did offer you, no, that's gone. Michael J. Fox is doing that. Mm. And I'm like, oh, okay, Paul. <laughs> so you live and learn the hard way. But, um, right, whereas you said Michelle Pfeiffer was gotten to Scarface. Yeah, you know, her trajectory was always going to be what it's been. You know, you don't have that kind of luminous beauty. And, uh, uh, and uh, she, she um, I think she started rolling on her second film before, again, before mm -hmm. Grease came out. And, you know, you're only as good as your last picture. Right. Did you have fun on the set? We did have a lot of laughs on that film. Um, and uh, funnily enough, the T-Birds have all remained friends of mine. Chris oh. McDonald and Adrian's Med, yeah. and um, I, I like to catch up with Peter Frechette when I can, when uh -huh. he's in, on, on The Great White Way, yeah. and then Leaf Green. It was a lovely group of people. And Lorna Luft, and um, yeah, it was a special time. It really was. Well, it's a fantasy for me as an English guy thrown into an American high school in the circa 1959 or whatever. And, um, or uh, it, was, uh, it was just a dream come true. Some people have tried to put it on stage, haven't they? Isn't there something in Melbourne? Yeah, Greece yeah. Two in concert? Yeah, or? actually they asked me to go over and see it. Oh, yeah. And then I said, okay, where's the plane ticket? And they said, oh no, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> not quite, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> so you're here, obviously, is your wife, is your wife joining She's you? She's coming in for the opening. Okay. Yeah, and um, uh, we, uh, we're very hopeful about the show. So you're having fun doing a comedy? Yeah, yeah, I'm not really known for it, but uh, but then I have some of the film work I've done, uh, Real Blonde and Empire Records. Right. I was, they were, certainly oh, I yeah. was the so laughing of, stock in both those ones. A lot of people, a lot of my younger staff here all love you and Empire Records. Oh, good. It's funny how people my age, Grease 2, and then there's, a, there's another slightly younger yeah, group, yeah, yeah. Empire Records. That's right. That's cool. Yeah, that's, I'm happy about that, too. And, little cult uh, followings. Yeah. No, it, uh, and, uh, you know, it, this business is about hanging in there and just, yeah. just trying to get, jump on the... Jump behind the wheel of the right sports car at the right time. Yeah, you know, before they, you know, bring out the uh, the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that happening anytime soon. Good. Where's the wood? <laughs> well, thank you, Maxwell, for being here. My pleasure. And everybody should go see Cactus Flower at the West Side Theater. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.